Hey everybody, what is up? How's it going? This is Fergie here, back from A Squad Gaming once again, and today I am proud to announce our complete coverage of the new installation of the Assassin's Creed series, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Today we are going to start, after my first looks video, we are going to start off with a kind of 10 things you really need to know when you're jumping right into the game, and we're also going to cover a few of the major changes that have been involved, because there are a few different things going on in this game that might confuse a little bit right off the bat, but most of them are pretty great, and I think you're going to like them. Alright, so our first major change, is you re I'm really not informing anybody of this, you're going to figure this out pretty quickly, but the main protagonists in this game are twin assassins. That's right, for the first time we do get to play as two different characters throughout the entire game, one of them also is a female, which I think is another first. So, this is a great new introduction to the game, along with the fact that both of them play very differently as well. It's not like having two of the exact same characters that have the same moves, same abilities, same you know skills and stats, everything like that. They both play very differently. Jacob is actually more oriented towards beating people up and just kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat while Evie is more focused on stealth and actually kind of more the assassin-y approach. Um, you can actually switch between them in-game just by going to the pause menu and clicking the right stick and you can switch in between them almost whenever you want. Some of the missions in the game kind of require one or the other and you can't always double up but most of the time you can play with whoever you want and they will both be playing very differently as well which we'll get to in a second depending on what gear you have them using and how you spec them in their skill trees which is what we'll talk about next. So next up we look at the new refined version of the skill trees. Now back in Assassin's Creed Unity obviously we had skill trees but these work a little bit differently than they did back in Unity. These In Unity really they were more focused on multiplayer gameplay whereas these are focused on the complete play style of your character and how exactly you're going to focus each of these individual characters. I'll start off by saying almost everything you do with Eevee and Jacob is individual. Now if you buy gear or buy equipment or things like that it is shared. You can equip it separately but all of their skills, all of their gear and their stats is separate so you can spec each of them very very differently. Eevee is kind of suggested to go towards a stealth approach and Jacob more hand-to-hand -hand combat beat him up uh, toss and Ross style you know what I'm saying uh, so that being said there are three different skill trees involved in this game there's combat stealth and the, the economy skill tree ecosystem kind of they, they both kind of mean the exact same thing because it's really based around your economy and your survival and things like that combat obviously is more focused towards Jacob you can see the moves with the red and blue diamonds the red means Eevee and the blue means Jacob these skills can only be purchased by them and give huge bonuses to them so that's kind of why they suggest you take a specific route with your characters there you can see my almost maxed out Eevee tree but other than that really you can spec however you want there's a lot of great skills in these trees they're gonna improve your playstyle in a lot of ways for our third and fourth things on this list, we have the return, but the refined and improved versions of special kind of customized inventory items, as well as the return and improved versions of crafting. Now, these synergize very well together, and I think they're put together very well in this game. Now, in this game, we have three types of primary weapons. We have iron knuckles, cane staffs, and kukris. Now, Eevee kind of is more centered around the cane staffs, whereas Jacob uses primarily the iron knuckles and the kukris, but it really doesn't really matter unless you're trying to go for as much damage as possible and things like that. You can build the characters however you want and have them use whatever kinds of weapons you want and they're all very different, they're all individual. Some of them require crafting, some of them you can just purchase and all of them can be upgraded once you get them as well to increase their stats. As you can see we have three main stats on these pieces of gear. There's attack, stun, and lethality. Attack basically just increases the overall damage that they're doing. You can kill people faster. Stun slows down your opponent more and more to where they won't be able to hit you as much and you'll be able to hit them more. And lethality, basically, it's hard to explain without showing some, some visuals, but I will in a little bit here. Lethality increases the rate at which you get them down to a minimal amount of health when you can just finish them off. So it's kind of hard to explain how lethality works, but it's almost just an improved version of attack. So all three are very important. Some of the weapons prioritize more than others. As you can see here, we have some secret versions as well as some very high-leveled ones at the end, and we'll be talking about kind of the secrets and crafting and things like that here in a little bit. Um, there are 10 levels in this game, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. You level up as time goes on. Every 1,000 XP you get, which you get from quests and discovering things and killing people and things like that, is going to give you a skill point in every, I don't know, it kind of varies with the skill points. After you use a lot of skill points, you'll be able to level up. So that's basically how that works. Uh, next up on our list, we have these Assassin Gauntlets, and these are another piece of gear you can customize for each Assassin. Now, for these, I wouldn't suggest doing anything different. I would just say you should use your highest leveled one for each character. However, I only have the level 3 one right now in my level 5 characters because I haven't progressed as far in the story as I have leveled up. Um, that being said, these are very important. They increase your straight overall attack, and some of them look very, very cool as well. 
As you can see, we have the return of firearms as well. Some of these are a lot more powerful than previous titles because this game is based in Victorian London, which is about 1860. So we are getting to the point where firearms are going to start getting the advantage over melee weapons. So I don't know how much further they can really go in time with the series, but you never really know. Some of these pistols are absolutely amazing. This last one, I believe, here is kind of just a, a full-on semi-auto, and a couple of the others are very, very good as well. If you just spam Y, uh, you can kill an entire pack of people if you have enough damage on your pistol. However, bullets are very expensive and replenishing them is expensive and things like that, so keep that in mind. Now with each assassin we do have one piece of gear which is different from the other. Evie uses capes and Jacob uses belts. Now each of them give the exact same amount of stats, defense, and stealth, but obviously they look different. When you change the outfit that your character is wearing, which I'll talk about in a second as well, you're still going to be able to see all the customization you have, which I think is another good decision they've made in this game. As you can see, a lot of these need to be crafted, and we'll get to crafting again here in a second, but I'm just showing off the different kinds of customization you can have between the two individual characters because there are a lot of changes you can make that will synergize with a lot of how you're building your stats, which you can see if you go out to the inventory menu, you have defense and stealth as well as the three main weapon stats. And you can build these very differently depending on your skills and your gear and things like that. The second to last thing we have here are different outfits. Now these are fairly expensive, but they do give very powerful overall passive bonuses depending on which outfit you have on. I have the original generic ones for both characters right now because they increase your weapon damage, which with um, cane swords and iron knuckles, that's why I'm doing that. I still need to work on upgrading them, but there are a few others you can unlock as well as the master assassin outfits, which look really cool and are also really great. So keep an eye out for that. Now our final thing we need to look at, which is returning community as well as a couple other games as well, is the use of colors. Now they really streamlined this, it's actually very simple. A few of these you can buy right off the bat. They do look a little bit nicer in the other outfits, not the generic ones. And the other ones can be unlocked via pressed flowers, which are very similar to the collectible system in Unity, which allows you to unlock cooler and cooler looking dyes depending on how many of them you collect. So as you collect more and more, as you can see, you can get all the way down to this really sexy crimson dye, which looks really nice after you find all 30 of the pressed flowers. So keep that in mind, keep your eyes open. The symbol on the map is just a little kind of flower. You'll be able to see it pretty, pretty easily. Alright, so next up we take a look at the fourth thing in this guide, and this is the revamp, the overhaul of crafting. Now, crafting in this game, I do enjoy it. It, is, it works very smoothly, and really it kind of increases the progression of things and makes things a little bit more difficult, which I enjoy a lot. So, we do have the inventory upgrades here, as well as the craftable gear upgrades, which you can look at in separate tabs. Here we can just increase the uh, damage of our throwing knives, of our bombs, of everything, how that really works, our medicines and things like that. Crafting really can persist up to three different things. It's going to cost a certain amount of money, it's going to cost a certain amount of materials, which you'll find by killing people, and chests, and from mission rewards and things like that. And the third thing it may require is a schematic, I believe is what how you pronounce that word. I couldn't kill it right there, but with, with the schematic things, they're normally going to be the best kinds of gear. You need them for all of the Assassin Gauntlets, as well as a few of the best weapons in the game, most of which will be secret. That being said, these are very difficult to find. Some of them may be in golden chests. You may get some of them for long, drawn-out quest rewards and things like that. So you'll have to be pretty lucky to come across these. Everything else can just be straight-up crafted. All right, so the fifth thing we're going to look at here in this series of major changes is the incorporation of the Rooks. Now, this is the gang that Jacob and Evie start once they get to London. They decide as they conquer all these areas, kill all these people, that the ones they don't kill, um, they're going to have join a gang, and they call this gang the Rooks. You can tell your gang members if they're wearing this very, very ugly green and yellow uniform. They'll be out on the street. You can press RB. They'll join you. You can have them attack for you, drive getaway vehicles for you, and things like that. You can also improve the weapons they use, along with some of them may be brutes, some of them may use very long rifles and things like that. We're going to look at this here in the Gang Upgrades menu, which is really how you can control how the Rooks operate, and they'll also give you a lot of really good passive bonuses to help you through the game and get you a lot more money overall and things like that. Now there are three trees in this screen, kind of like the skills trees. We have Ringleader, Insider, and Swindler. Now Ringleader is really focused on what kinds of Rooks you're using. It's focused on the Rooks themselves. You can change what kinds of carriages they drive. They'll be faster and lighter and things like that. You can choose what kinds of weapons they use, how strong they are, how much health they have. And you can also weaken the Blighters, which is the enemy gang in London that's run by the big villain and things like that. 
The second tree we have here is Insider, which kind of focuses on the police and kind of infiltration within the system and makes the blighters afraid of you and things like that. These are actually pretty helpful as well, and some of them will save you some money, and some of them will also save you some time, as well as a lot of fights, because you'll actually scare off the opposing gang. But however, Swindler, I believe, is the most important of these three trees. Swindler is going to save you a lot of money, gain you a lot of money, and make things a lot easier for you as time goes on. I'm actually going to talk about this tree later on, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to guide on helping you make the most money possible as early as you can in the game. So remember Swindler Tree because if you put money and you invest it into this tree as fast as you can, the return value is going to be great and you're going to earn a lot more money. But really the most important thing is where all this money comes from and where is our home base, where is this upgrade screen and things like that. Now one of my favorite innovations in this game is the inclusion of the train home base. Now. Basically, if you remember from every other Assassin's Creed ever, you always have some kind of base where you can look at all your screens, all your mementos, all your awards, and things like that. However, in Syndicate, we have a full functioning moving train that actually drives around London. You can actually jump on it in live time, jump off it in live time, and you can either fast travel to it or if you're close to it, you can just catch it if it's close to you. Now, there are four carts in this train. The first cart, I mean, all of them really have souvenir areas where you can look at all your rewards and things like that. But the first one does include the gang upgrades menu, the one we just looked at. The second one includes the sequence kind of, you can kind of switch in between sequences. It's sort of hard to explain until you get into the game, but that's really how that works, as well as your main primary safe from all your investments. So that's where your money's going to come in. If you're familiar with other Assassin's Creed's, you're going to get money from this safe every half hour and if you get the right perks you're going to be getting more and more money as well. The third cart really has no purpose it's just for your rooks to hang out and the fourth cart is where you can change your inventory and change your gear and things like that as well as you have a little shopkeeper in order to upgrade some of your gear and replenish your materials. Now as you can see here we're right in the middle of London on my train and if I go out of the pause menu we will continue driving around so I can actually jump off if it's close to my destination I can fast travel to and away from it and it's a very very cool innovation for travel. Now speaking of innovative travel, let's take a look at my favorite addition to this game for our seventh major change. Now this is the grappling hook. Very early in the game, around the time that you actually get your train home base, you're going to gain access to this. Now this is basically a long range sniper rifle grappling hook which you can zip line across. You can even climb upwards on it if you need to get to a higher location. It is really great and it improves the, the speed of your travel just exponentially and it's also a lot of fun. You can assassinate people off of it. You can move from building to building very quickly across gigantic gaps, farther than you'd ever think, and it is just a whole lot of fun. I think it's a very great introduction to the game. It's not glitchy. Everything works very well. Everything overall works very well in this game. I, I must say, if you're familiar with Unity and you were kind of thrown off by the launch of the game, how buggy it was and things like that, don't come into this game having the same negative thoughts because they did a very good job on this game. It's made very well and I haven't encountered any issues at all. Another version of mobility and kind of travel we look at in this game is the introduction of carriages. Now we have been able to ride in carriages and we've had a boat in a couple games ago, but in this game, there it's it kind of reminds me of Grand Theft Auto, honestly. You can actually come jack people's carriages off the street whenever you want. There's many different kinds of them. You can drive them around, you can run over people, you can bring down lamp posts and actually cause a lot of destruction and it's a lot of fun. There are several chase scenes, you can actually get yourself into races and do a lot of really cool stuff like that. So I think this is another great introduction and it also kind of lets you waste some time if you feel like just destroying some things or getting some anger out etc it is it is a lot of fun i like this change just like i like the grappling hook now for our ninth major change we look take a look at the perks menu under the progression log now this is just a minor addition that actually is very helpful and can give you a little bit of something to shoot for as you're playing through the game just involving kills and different kinds of styles and strategies and things like that under the perks menu we have a lot of different methods of killing a lot of different methods of attacking that if done enough can a gain you a very small but very effective passive little perk here we have slightly increases damage on a ledge increases your damage of your carriage and if you do enough of these you're going to unlock these passives they won't really show up on your stats but you'll be able to tell that you're actually doing more damage things are working out easier and you're having a better time because these perks make things a lot easier if you unlock as many of them as you can some of them are very difficult to unlock and they take paying attention to to actually get you wouldn't get too many zipline assassinations unless you're really smooth at this game unless you're really thinking about it so you have to get 25 of them and there you decrease the noise of your assassinate so it's just great a lot of these additions are a lot of fun and 
going on that note, let's talk about the revised combat system that is in this game. Now, again, if you're familiar with Assassin's Creed, things are pretty similar. They work almost exactly the same. They still have X to beat the shit out of people, um, B to counter, and A to break their defenses, and then Y to throw, and things like that. You can also press Y to use your firearm and fire it off around at a bunch of people. You'll see me do that here in a minute. But everything runs very smoothly, even compared to a few of the last titles, especially on Next Gen. I really like how the game is playing so far with the combat. There's a lot of really cool kill cutscenes. If you can get two or three people on low health around you and kill them all at once, it's, it's really, really entertaining. And I think it's a great change. Um, there are a lot of other action scenes where you're using other kinds of weapons. Here you can see I'm using a Gatling gun. You unlock other kinds of weapons as well that you can just use temporarily. And there's also a lot of really high level enemies to kill that have special moves and take a little bit more strategy than just spamming X and B and Y and things like that. So keep that in mind. Is Not everything is going to be as easy as you think it is, especially if you run into somebody that is at a much higher level than you. That's going to make things a lot more interesting and a lot more difficult for you. But it's honestly going to be a lot more fun because sometimes these games can be a little bit too easy and I feel like this one has a pretty good difficulty going on for it. So so far. Alright, so that is our 10 major changes in this game. Of course, those aren't the only 10 changes. There are a lot of things going on that are very, very different from any of the other previous Assassin's Creed's. I also obviously included some things that aren't innovative, but have been revamped and brought back from other games, which I think were a very great choice. I haven't really run into anything in this game that I don't like yet. I think it's a lot of fun. I love the setting of London. I love all the different places you can get around and all the different ways you can get around and how they've changed the game as much as they have back from Unity. Now, I didn't hate Unity, but I already like this game much, much more, especially because of the, the smoothness that it runs at. There's no glitches. The parkour is refined a lot more along with the combat, and overall, it is a lot of fun. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to play this game if you don't have it already. I give it probably an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Obviously, I'm going to make a complete review and guide video and things like that. We're going to jump right into the guides here starting tomorrow, and then later on, we will have a complete review of the game that you guys can check out if you still haven't bought it. But if you do already have it, enjoy because it is a lot of fun, and there's so much for you to do that it's probably going to take you quite a while along with us. So good luck to everybody. I hope you're enjoying this game. The last little thing I'll say is they have brought back the awesome assassination missions in the main story with different choices and different decisions and different cutscenes and things like that. So I'm going to actually roll one of these for you at the end. Click away now if you don't want any spoilers spoilers of this sequence is just a quick little scene and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. This has been Fergie from A Squad Gaming and have a nice day. Here it is, Doctor. We will continue our experiment shortly. In a moment, we will compare the brains of our two specimens. Since both specimens had a propensity towards violent behavior, we should see similar protrusions in specific parts of their brains. Corpses do not have boots. 